Welcome to a Code Report Hacker Rank Solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem two from Hacker Rank Hiring Contest, and the problem is entitled Winning Lottery Ticket. So the problem states you are given n number of tickets. Each ticket has up to 10 to the 6 digits, and a digit is from 0 to 9. A winning pair is a pair of tickets that, when combined, has at least one instance of each digit, which is from 0 to 9. So the question asks, how many pairs of tickets are a winning pair? And the constraints in this problem, the number of tickets is between one and a million, the length of each ticket is between one and a million, and the total sum of all the lengths of all the tickets is less than a million. So let's take a look at an example. So in this example, we have three tickets, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, and six, seven, eight, nine, zero. We have three pairs based on these three tickets. And we can see by just looking at them that only the last pair has, uh, is a winning pair because it has every single digit within the two tickets. So if we're to just brute force this, we would have a quadratic algorithm checking every single pair and just seeing if each pair of tickets has each of the digits zero to nine. But if we look at the constraints again, we know that the number of tickets we have it can be up to a million. And I don't have the video made yet, but I'll be releasing it soon. And uh, it's going to be talking about TLEs, time limits exceeded. And we know that for a quadratic uh, algorithm, a million elements uh, is going to TLE. It's, it's not going to work. So we're going to have to be a little bit smarter with our algorithm. So let's take a look at a different example and see if we can see any shortcuts. So in this example, we've just taken the last three tickets and added a fourth ticket, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And if we take a look at the number of pairs, we have uh, six now. So the first three plus uh, a, a new three, which is just the fourth ticket combined with the original three tickets. And if we take a look at the pairs of tickets that satisfy uh, a winning pair, we have this pattern. So you'll note that the first three and the last three have the same pattern, and that's because the fourth ticket is actually just the same as the first ticket, because all we care about is whether or not a digit exists in our ticket. We don't actually care about the whole ticket. So if we have a ticket that has 100 digits in it, we only care whether or not a digit exists, not we don't care about the whole 100 digits. So if we can find a way to encode uh, whether a digit exists or not in a ticket and have that encoding represent our ticket, we can probably uh, reduce the number of operations we have to do in our algorithm. So the way that we're going to do our encoding is by using a string with 10 characters. Each of the characters in the string is going to correspond to one of the 10 digits, 0 through 9. And if it's zero, it means that that digit doesn't exist in our ticket. And if it's one, it means that that digit does exist. So for our first ticket, one, two, three, four, five, you can see that the one index through the five index are all set to one. And once we do this, we can see that the first ticket and the fourth ticket are actually the same. And so if we can encode all of our up to one million tickets, and then only store the encoding and account of how many tickets have that encoding, we can then make use of this structure uh, to more efficiently calculate the total number of winning ticket pairs. And we know that the maximum number of encodings is two to the power of 10, because for every ticket, you either have uh, a digit in it or out of it. So you have two options and you have 10 digits. So two times two times two, 10 times, uh, which is going to equal 1,024 different possible encodings. And so if we do uh, 1,024 uh, squared, so we use this as in our quadratic algorithm, that's going to roughly equal a million. And a million, uh, we'll, we know, won't TLE. It won't uh, exceed our time limit. So let's take a look at the code. So on the left is our main function, the winning lottery ticket, which takes a vector of strings, our tickets. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct an unordered map, which is a hash map. 
the key is going to be the string, the encoded ticket, and uh, the value is going to be the number of those encodings we have. Our first loop here is basically looping through all of our tickets. It starts off by setting the key equal to its basically base state where the ticket doesn't contain any of the digits. And then uh, we use uh, another range based for loop uh, to use each digit. And we basically are getting a reference to the character that corresponds to that digit. So if we have, if our digit is a two, it's gonna be the character two minus the character zero, which will give us an index value of two. And then it'll change the, the second character in this string, our key uh, to one. And then once we're finished doing the inner range base for loop, we are going to insert that key into our map, or if it already exists, we're gonna get a reference to the value and do a post increment, a plus plus. So that's what our first for loop does. Uh, then our second uh, set of for loops, our nested for loops, is basically doing that quadratic comparison. So we're looping through uh, all of our tickets, and then inside that loop for each ticket, we look at the, uh, we set an iterator uh, to the next ticket after i, and uh, then we have one ticket i, and another ticket j, and we look at the encodings and we call this function string XOR. And that basically just checks to make sure that there's at least one instance of each digit in the combined characters. So it's saying if uh, each uh, character in the string for the same index is equal to zero, we know that those that pair of tickets doesn't contain uh, that corresponding digit. So return false. But if we can get through this for loop without violating its condition, we return true. And then we, uh, to our total number of winning tickets, we have to multiply uh, the combination of uh, both of the values from those encodings. So if in, in our previous example where we had one, two, three, four, five, and then this the fourth ticket, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, we would have two of those. And when we combine that with the six, seven, eight, nine, zero ticket, we're going to have two combinations because we have two for the one, two, three, four, five, and one for the six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So that would uh, be two times one, and we'd add that to our sum. And so this last piece of code is just taking care of uh, a ticket that has all of the digits in it combined with uh, the remaining tickets. Um, so it's, it's similar to the problem if you've got, you know, 10 people in a room, how many possible handshakes are there? The answer to that is n times n minus 1 divided by 2, which is exactly what you can see here. Uh, the value times the value minus 1 divided by 2. And once we do that, we add it to our answer and then we turn that from the function. And the last thing to do is look at the complexity of this algorithm. So because we know that uh, this quadratic for loop is uh, bounded by 1024. It's not going to drive our complexity. Um, and we're given at the beginning of the problem that the total sum of all of the ticket lengths is going to be less than uh, 10 to the power of 6, which is a million. So uh, our algorithm is going to be linear in the length of the total length of all of our tickets. Thanks for watching.